How's it going, everybody? We're back once again. It is the week eight recap. Talking about Daily Fantasy, talking about my Best Buys article on ESPN. Going to look through it and find out where I was right, where I was wrong, where my process was good, where it was bad. Uh, where it was bad, uh, or not where it was bad, where, where I was wrong, was the process bad or was... Uh, were we just unlucky? There was definitely one of those spots this week. And where the process was good, were we right or did we get unlucky? Because there was definitely one of those spots this week where the process was good and we got lucky. Uh, and that's really what it's all about. Some people look at you and you say, well, you just win. You're just lucky. You're more lucky than me. You're luckier than everybody else. That's not true. Nobody is more lucky or more unlucky than anyone else. But if you put yourself in a spot to win, if you make good decisions consistently, when you are in a position to be lucky and you get lucky, you're going to win a lot. And to me, that's what it's really all about. Making good decisions over and over and over again. And some of those times when you make those good decisions, uh, in, when you expect like 12 or 15 points out of somebody, you might get 25 or 30. Uh, and that's where you want to be. And some of the decisions that we made this week that I thought were going to be chalk plays were not. They were really low-owned plays, uh, which kind of surprised me. So I'm going to be interested to see uh, where those things happen. And maybe, I don't know if I can analyze why, but just figure out what happened. Uh, we're also going to look at my head-to-head -head lineup on DraftKings. I'll go through that. I'll give you my results on how I did in cash games once again this week. Uh, so thank you guys very much for showing up. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on Facebook, let's see how many likes this video can get. And please like the page or subscribe to the channel. Uh, would definitely appreciate that. So let's look first. Let's get right into get right into our Best Buys column. This is Best Buys for Week 8. It's an insider piece on ESPN, just like every week. Costs a couple bucks a month for you guys to be an insider, and hopefully you can win a whole lot more than that. For me, it seems like a pretty small investment. You know, if you're playing like 100 or a 1000 or $50 a week for NFL, but you're not willing to pay $3 for insider, because I get those replies every single week on Twitter. Uh, whenever ESPN Fantasy tweets it out that this is out, somebody always likes to try and be snarky and go, people actually pay for insider? Yeah, they do. And here's why. Carson Wentz, my high-priced quarterback of the week that I thought was uh, the best play, and then the rain came in, and we talked about Sunday morning on the anti-Tinkercast, uh, how we were going to come off of him with the rain situation. Adam Levitan tweeted out the rain games this week and how many yards they average combined in those games and then how they were each down 10 to 20 percent on yardage in those games and that's why we come off of such an, certain weather situations when there is a torrential downpour like there was in Washington like there was uh potentially in uh in Philly as well Carson Wentz didn't do terribly 18 of 32 211 yards two touchdowns a long one for Alshon Jeffrey but he also missed Alshon on another long one, which would give him three touchdowns and had him reach value he missed but not by that much uh, Kirk Cousins we also came off of because of the weather ended up with a bad line uh, 26 of 39 for 263 and one touchdown with one interception hopefully in this range you pivoted to uh, Russ Wilson who did not have weather problems or you pivoted to uh, Deshaun Watson in tournaments who absolutely both of them went bonkers uh, in that same exact 6400 price range. Andy Dalton, perfect for cash. We look to pay down every single week in cash to allow us to pay up at running back and wide receiver for the volume we need to get there. And with the pricing as tight as it is on DraftKings, uh, we've had, I think, one week where our value quarterback did not reach value in eight weeks so far. So we've been pretty blessed in terms of our low-dollar quarterbacks. We've been hitting on every one of those, and we did again this week. 17 of 29, 243 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, 18.7 points. For 5,700, we want like 16, 16 and a half. So he did what he had to do for you to get that 150 points uh, that you want to be able to get in cash games. Now, because of the truncated slate, only nine games on the slate, because of the rain in two or wind in two or three of the games, it really made it a seven or a six game slate. And in those games, there were some disappointing players, which held scoring down once again this week. In, in conjunction with the tight pricing, you're going to have lower scores as well. But you look at our running backs, and every one of them did just fine. Ezekiel Elliott paid up for the highest price guy. If you did 30.4 uh, 30 points, 33 carries once again, 150 yards, two touchdowns, one catch on two targets for four yards, pretty insignificant in the pass game. If you paid up for him over LaShawn McCoy, it didn't bother you. That extra 500, yeah, you could have saved 500 and gone to McCoy, and he would have had, what, like 32 and a half points, 33 points, more involvement in the passing game. Uh, busted off a long touchdown run in the fourth quarter, which really solidified him. Uh, as the best running back of the day but when you get 30 plus points out of your running back do not complain mark ingram got the volume we expected as well six catches on six targets for 24 yards uh, his involvement in the passing game has been and will continue to be a constant especially with the saints at home 
18 carries, 75 yards, and a touchdown. He did have two fumbles, uh, but end of the day, with 19.9 fantasy points, he needed 21 and a half for value. Those two fumbles cost him that. But again, if you're within a point and a half or two points of uh, of scoring, you're fine. You don't want the eight the eight point game out of your running back. Last running back was the value guy, and this one was really under owned to me. Joe Mixon had all the ownership. Uh, DeAndre Washington, uh, and I was hoping that. Uh, Right here, I said he should see enough work in the passing game to make the 12 PPR points he needs to reach cash game uh, viability a reality. I was hoping that he would have four catches and 80 scrimmage yards. That was what I was banking on getting uh, from him to get those 12 points that I need in cash games to pay off that salary and allow me to spend money elsewhere. DeAndre Washington ended the day with 88 yards from scrimmage on six carries but he caught eight balls on 10 targets and scored a touchdown late in the game giving him 21.8 fantasy points and in tournaments he was like under 10 percent owned i did not see that coming he was really under owned in cash games too he was under 10 percent owned in cash games i was shocked i was legit shocked that he was that low owned uh considering the situation uh in uh, in oakland with the running backs knowing that they were gonna have to throw the running backs and they were both very good pass catching backs. Yes, Olawale did catch a or did run in a touchdown, did vulture one early from Richard and from Washington, but it really didn't matter at the end of the day. Even if you subtract that touchdown, he still ends the day with 15.8 points. And if you got 15.8 points for a 4.1k player, you'd be very happy. So I'm very proud of how they did. Uh, all the running backs, Chris Thompson in the uh, intriguing for tournaments, even in a rain game as bad as that rain was, 16.4 points. Joe Mixon, who ended up being the chalk cash game play, uh, and we'll talk about him when I get to my cash game review at uh, end of the day with 12.9 fantasy points did not hurt you really at all there either aj green a little bit of a disappointment from him three catches but he was targeted eight times so he got the volume he just didn't make any plays this week 29 yards did bail himself out with a touchdown alshon jeffrey two catches only on eight targets again we got the volume that we wanted out of every single one of our best buys uh highlighted wide receivers this week two catches 62 yards that long touchdown bailing out his day even though Wentz missed him on a long touchdown early in the game Deshaun Jackson was the one who disappointed three catches on eight targets so essentially the three best buys wide receivers three catches eight targets two catches eight targets three catches eight targets that's shocking that all three of them did the same thing but only 37 yards for Djax and no touchdowns as Winston you could tell was still really affected by that injury. He had uh, a weak cornerback that he could attack or a weak cornerback uh, situation that he could attack, and he just couldn't make anything happen. Uh, 6.7 points for DJX for 5.1K just isn't enough. Kelvin Benjamin, uh, who was the pivot for me from Alshon Jeffrey, but I ended up playing both of them, ends the day with three catches for seven targets, 39 yards and one TD. Cam was very disappointing. 12.9 points, another touchdown bailout. Mohamed Sanu ended up being the best cash game play out of all of them. Somebody I was on at the beginning of the week, but based on the rain there in New York, I faded that game pretty much entirely. I played him a little bit in tournaments uh, to have some exposure, but he was out of my cash game lineup at that point. 19.4 points, six catches, seven targets, 74 yards, and an amazing touchdown catch, especially considering the rain situation. Ted Ginn disappointing. Two catches, four targets, 68 yards. Jordan Reed got injured. This is where we get unlucky. But if you paid attention, during the anti-tinker cast, even though Jordan Reed was somebody who was mispriced, we were off of Jordan Reed Sunday morning because of the situation with the rain in Washington. This is not somebody that we wanted to target because it was going to be very sloggy, very hard for anybody other than running backs to score points. Uh, so I had some allocation in tournaments, but he was nowhere near my cash game lineups by the time lineups lock. He ended the day with basically one fantasy point. Uh... Uh, I, we were definitely unlucky here because he got injured, but you could say, well, Jordan Reed is always an injury candidate, and especially in the rain. But again, if you were there for the anti-tinker cast, you were off of him. I hope that you were. Uh, if you weren't, why weren't you? Tune in next week on Sunday morning right before lock when the most actionable information uh, is there to be had. Jack Doyle, this is where we got lucky. Now, if you look at what we wrote in the article, Doyle's volume has been really solid over the past three weeks. 29 targets, 20 catches over that span. Outstanding right? The guy's been amazing. Uh, and then this week, he absolutely goes crazy. So he was too cheap and in a situation where his team should be chasing and forced to throw. A quarterback who can't get the ball downfield, if you look at T.Y. Hilton's stats. So he has to throw underneath to Jack Doyle. They've been doing it for three weeks already. They they did it again this week. We ended up with a ridiculously massive game out of Jack Doyle. 14 targets, 12 catches, 121 yards, and a touchdown. So again, 
I was looking for maybe 10 to 15 points out of Doyle, but we get lucky with a 33.1 uh, output. I had 35 to 40% allocation on Doyle in tournaments this week, which outpaced the field and really put me in a spot to, to capitalize in tournaments, uh, even though I didn't end up at the top of the sheet. So this is where we get lucky. Even though your process is right, you can get lucky too when your process is right. It's not just, well, your process was bad and you got bailed out. We definitely got bailed out in a couple of spots, uh, as we highlighted in the wide receiver section. But you can get lucky when your process is really good too uh, and just pile on a huge week. Zach Ertz caught a touchdown because apparently that's what he does every single week. 13.4 points for him for 7K. Tyler Croft paid off his salary at min salary at 3K. Uh, 9.6 points. The Eagles defense went crazy, 20 points. Uh, we were off of Houston Texans by Sunday morning because of the rising total in that game, uh, but I still didn't stack it. That was my bad, so bad pick here with the Texans. Uh, the play was to come down to the Cowboys, which we'll get to in a minute, and the Cincinnati Bengals with 14 points. Uh, did very well. Four sacks, one interception for them. Four sacks, two interceptions, and a defensive touchdown for both uh, the Eagles and the Bengals. Now, let's, uh, let's check this out. This is my cash game lineup. This is what I ended up with. This is the four-man CSU Ram nipped me again right at the buzzer. Uh, as I said, the Cowboys were where we wanted to end up, uh, and for a super cheap price. They were 2300 in a game where you knew it was going to be rainy and sloggy and windy, and the offenses weren't going to be able to perform as well as they have been. And the Redskins were without two off their center and another couple of offensive linemen that were hurt and – it was just a really good spot to pick a low price defense against a team that was going to be hobbled. And it paid off massively with a 19 point return. Uh, Andy Dalton right there. Mark Ingram went Joe Mixon here instead of DeAndre Washington, Kelvin Benjamin, Deshaun Jackson, Alshon Jeffrey, Tyler Croft, LaShawn McCoy. Uh, Cause I could not afford, I was zeroed out on this lineup, could not afford to get up. Uh, and, the, and I'll explain this in a second. Could not afford to get up to D uh, to Ezekiel Elliott here. So I went with McCoy because as I said, they're kind of right there neck and neck with me. If you if you need the extra 500, come down to McCoy, even though I preferred Zeke. Uh, McCoy did outscore him by like two points, uh, whatever. If you got 30.4 points, you weren't hurting either. And Cowboys defense. Now this was the two point, the, the, the 2v2 that hurt me and I'll get into why. <clears throat> I had DeAndre Washington here, who as you can see, DeAndre Washington was 4,100. He was 47. That would have given me, because I wanted more bangles in my lineup. Because I felt that I didn't have enough bangles in my lineup without them. With the point total where it was there and how much I thought that they were going to smash. And Mixon got tackled on the three. A little bit of bad variance there for him. If he doesn't get tackled there and goes into the end zone, all of a sudden he's got an 18-point day. You know, sorry, a 19.2-point day. Uh, puts you in a better spot, I guess. I would have won the three-man, whatever. This should have been Washington. Uh, which would have been 21 points, which would have given me enough money to come from Croft up to Jack Doyle, two guys who were highlighted in Best Buys this week, and the difference would have been roughly 30 points. I would have had 180-ish points in cash yesterday, which would have won a, a high-dollar queue that I was in, which would have uh, put me in position to maybe... I don't think I would have won the, the King of the Beach qualifier, but I think I would have won the $1,200 qualifier to go to uh, Miami for the championship there, the $12 million cha uh, championship. But again, this was just a solid lineup, essentially straight out of Best Buys. Uh, I had, instead of DJX here, I had Doxon, and I could, I did not like Doxon. I was paying up for defense here. Uh, I decided to go Cowboys and DJX as, as opposed to Doxon and one of the higher priced defenses. It really wouldn't have mattered. It would have been about the same either way there because the high priced defenses did just as well. Uh, Doxon didn't do anything. Uh, we spoke on the Anti Tinker cast about how I preferred P Rich to Doxon because he was playing a lot of snaps and more involved and Doxon's just been kind of shady. And then the weather as well was the other thing that got me more to P. Rich, uh, who I used in FD cash, who went absolutely bonkers. Uh, so this was my cash game lineup. Had a really good week, played 125 different head-to-heads on DraftKings. I won 99 of that 125, so 99 and 26 on the week. Really solid lineup, 75th, 80th percentile score that could have been 100th percentile score and sweep the board in all the three max games or most of the three max games in the queues and everything else. So positive week, a winning week, uh, could have been a massive week, but I'm not going to complain about a W. So let's start our, our week nine. Let's get into it. I'm going to do my research. I got the Wednesday, uh, is my writing day. Article comes out on Thursday, edge podcast, 06010 podcast comes out on Thursday. Fantasy forecast podcast comes out on Thursday. And then we'll be right back here on Friday for the 
Q&A for NFL. If you play NBA, I'm doing two NBA shows a week. Those are going to be on Tuesday and Wednesday. I posted the stream schedule right there on Twitter. It's a pinned tweet. Go to my Twitter profile and you can check it out with the start times for all of those streams. Uh, and the NFL shows are all going to be hosted on YouTube and Facebook. So thank you guys for watching. If you're still watching on YouTube or if you're still watching on Facebook and you have not yet, please smash that like button. Appreciate you guys being here. And we'll catch up to you later in the week with the other NBA and NFL shows. Bye, everybody.